a rectangular prism, which is essentially a box, and it gave me those dotted lines back here, indicating that we're seeing through this box. And they're asking, what is the best estimation, oops, keyword estimation, in square centimeters? So I know square centimeters fit on a surface, like tiles fit on a floor, and therefore they're talking about surface area. So they're literally saying how many um, squares that are one centimeter by one centimeter would fit onto the surface of this rectangular prism. And because they're asking us to estimate, we're going to get rid of the measurements 1.9 and 1.9, round them up to 2, and round 5.4 to 5. So they gave us the surface area formula, and, and this is useful, um, so I'll explain it briefly. 2WL, it reads, plus 2LH plus 2WH. Now, uh, the only problem you might encounter here is what do you do with all this stuff? Well, 2WL means 2 times W times L, plus, this is 2 times L times H, and this is plus 2 times W times H. So when those letters are right next to each other, with, and if the numbers are next to a letter, what that means is to multiply. So what you could do is just pick one of these numbers to represent each of the variables, W, L, and here's H, and then plug this in to get the multiple combination. So you get 2 times 2 times 2 plus 2 times 2 times 5. Remember, I chose 5 as my height plus 2 times 2 times the height of 5. Multiply all this up, add it up. Here we get 4 times 5 is 20. Here's another 20. And then here's 8, so it's 48. But I, I mean, I like to think of what I'm actually doing instead of thinking of the formula. Uh, WL is the, the width and the length multiplied gives us the front side of the box. So it's 2 times 2, and that's 4. And there is a rear side over here, which is identical. So we take 4, multiply it by 2, we get 8. So that's our front and our rear. That's two sides. Now the top, up here, it's 5 long by 2 wide. So it's, it's 5 by 2, or 10. And there are, in fact, um, 4 of these sides. So it's 10 times 4, or 40. The surface area is all that added together, and it's 48. This question shouldn't be in this category, but I left it in here. The cone is like a party hat, and the base is considered the circle on the bottom. Again, here's another surface area question, and they give us the length, ah, sorry about that, the length, the width, and the height. Now, the, I think the only place we can go wrong here is uh, plugging into the formula. You see 2w and then this. Don't confuse it for a 1, it's an L plus 2, again, not a 1, an L, H plus 2WH, and then, again, 2WL means 2 times W times L, plus 2 times L times H, plus 2 times W times H, and we plug in. So our width is 5. I'm going to underline these measurements and write what they are next to them so I don't lose track. So it's 2 times 5 times 10, plus 2 times... 10 times 6 plus 2 times 5 times 6. So this is 30 times 2 or 60, 60 times 2 or 120, 50 times 2 or 100. So add up these hundreds, we get 220 plus 60 is our answer to 280. So here we have the length of each side of a cube is 2.05 centimeters long. What is the best keyword estimation of the surface area of the cube in square centimeters? So that means we would estimate each side of the cube as two. And in a cube, we only need to find a side because they're all the same on a cube. Every single side is going to be two. So that's why I have this formula right here, 6s squared. Well, s squared comes from s times s. In other words, in this case, 2 times 2 would give you this front face of the cube, but um, there on a cube, it's like a number dice and you roll it, there are six faces. So really you take the six faces and then multiply it by s and then that times s. So it's in this case two times two, our two sides, times six, so four times six or twenty-four. This question also doesn't really belong here, but it's a great one I think. If the circumference of a circle is doubled, how does the diameter of the circle change? So I mean, we have four choices, and, and 
the diameter stays the same it doesn't really make sense because as you make a circle larger the circumference becomes larger with it so as you expand the diameter so the circumference expands so now the diameter becoming half as long would make sense because that means the diameter gets smaller so the circle wouldn't be longer so we have two choices and that becomes twice as long or four times as long so what I want to do is to estimate and try some examples um, let's estimate pi is 3 and let's pretend our diameter is um, 4 so that means that our circumference is 4 times 3 or 12 so if I double my diameter to 8 and I multiply 8 by 3 I get a new circumference of 24 so my circumference doubled and so did my diameter let's try another one um, 3 pi times if our diameter is 5 we get 15 and then 3 times 10 will double the diameter we get 30 and our circumference doubles so it looks like the diameter becoming twice as long will also double the circumference there's definitely a constant ratio in there which is what pi tells us and also if we test out the other example if we had 3 times 5 and our diameter is 5 that means the circumference would be 15 but if I make this diameter 4 times larger than 20 and I multiply 3 by 20 get the new circumference I get 60 and our um, circumference becomes six times longer. So we have another problem here and this is an interesting problem because not many people have a hard time with it. It's, it's just the fact that we have uh, a, a polygon here that's leaning over that can confuse us and they're asking you what's the measure of angle X and well all these angles here 72 degrees plus 115 plus 40 and then plus this mystery angle when you add them up, you have to get 360 because really what's happening is here, you want to look at the number of triangles that you can cut this shape into. I'll cut it in two. Every triangle is 180 degrees, so a, uh, a shape with four sides can fit two triangles with 360 degrees. So if I add up all these numbers right here, and by showing your work, you can write out the equation and then kind of maybe even draw uh, what you're combining. So you get 72 plus 115, you still have a calculator on this section. You just want to show what you did. And then that plus 40 plus x equals 360. So 187 <clears throat> plus 40 gives me 227 plus a mystery number to get up, up to 360. So to figure out what that gap is, I'm going to do 360 minus 227. And once I do this, 360 minus 227, I get my answer of 133, and 133 plus 227 is 360, so it makes sense. Now, please remember, when you're taking these tests, to always write those answers on the answer lines, as they will take points off. Um, and here, they ask you to check your answer. The key is, when they ask you to check your answer as part of the grade of the question, not just as a suggestion or routine, you want to make sure you're trying something different here to solve it. Um, one thing could be replugging this into the equation. You would write that. Plug into the equation. So if we're correct, here's our original equation. 72 plus 115 plus 40 plus now 133 should equal 360. And you could show how it does. You can pair these up and get 173 and pair these up again and get 187. And you pair these two up and you get, well, 100 and 100 is 200, 80 and 70 is 150, so that's 350, plus 73 is 360. So 360 does equal what we thought it would be as 360 here. Um, this question was um, tricky because it's a part two, and um, they don't want you to use a protractor to figure out if it's a right triangle because you didn't see this little symbol, this protractor symbol. Um, they want to figure out if it's a right triangle by using the Pythagorean theorem. And what's important to note is that not only does the Pythagorean theorem tell us that if we have a right angle here, and we have a leg and a leg, and we, we take 7 squared plus 6 squared, and we know that the Pythagorean theorem says if we add up the square of this and the square of that, we get 10 squared, the hypotenuse squared. Not only does it state this relationship, but if it turns out that this side doesn't equal that, so if 7 squared plus 6 squared doesn't equal 10 squared, then you don't have a, tri uh, a right triangle. You have other types of triangles, depending on if this is larger or less than the square of the hypotenuse, I believe. I have to check that, though. So 7 squared, you want to show right here, 
is 49 plus 6 squared is 36 and 10 squared is 100 and 49 and 36 is 85 and that does not equal 100 so you can state that uh, you know this triangle you can abbreviate is not a right triangle since 7 squared plus 6 squared did not equal 100 as observed by the Pythagorean theorem. Um, other part two is also, well, here's, well this part two is, is misleading because we have this three-dimensional picture of dirt. And they want to know how many of these piles would have to fit into this whole shape. Now, be careful not to measure or estimate your thumb from here all the way down here. You want to pick a length um, that you can see and measure, even with your finger. And then, so for example, if I pick this right here in the back, this length, I want to figure out how many times this length fits into the whole shape, especially with the full piece of length right here. And I'd say, about three times. So, estimate the weight of the dirt in the planter when the planter is completely filled. So, this planter has eight pounds of dirt and this much space. So, if I tripled it to fill this thing up, that would be time eight pounds times three, or 24 pounds, which you can put right here. And then, it asks you to describe how you can estimate the weight of the dirt without using a ruler. So what you want to pinpoint uh, when you're describing something on a state test is not the general, which was the general strategy, but a very specific strategy. You can say here that I, if you measure the length of an edge, it's called one of these lines or just lines, and then figure how many times that section of the edge fits into the whole edge on that side. So you could write about that. You would say what you're seeing there. Now here is the cylindrical tank, it's a cylinder question, they want to know what's the surface area of the entire tank to the nearest square foot. So to find the surface area of a circle, we have to find the two areas of the circles on the top or bottom, and then you have to add in this lateral surface here, and if you unfolded it, take a piece of paper before you roll it, think about it on a toilet paper roll, before it goes on the roll, or after I should say. Um, as it goes at, off the roll, you notice it's a rectangle. And then it, when it was on the roll, it wrapped right around it. Same idea here, except that this piece that rolls up the middle is everything. It has to fit exactly around this circle here. And so that means that the length of this part of the lateral surface in the middle has to fit exactly around the circles, so it equals the circumference of the circles. So we just step one further back. If the radius is 2, and the diameter is 4, and the height is 5. The height is how tall this piece is. Now this piece right here, in order to wrap completely around the circle, it has to be about 4 pi long, which is the distance around this circle right here. You take the diameter of the radius, which is 2, and then multiply that by pi. And the height is 5. So to find out what the area of this part is, we just take 4 pi and multiply it 5. So it's like having 5 groups of 4 pi, or 20 pi's. Now, once you have established that, it looks like we're actually done with this question. Wait, oh. One can, one can of paint will cover 25 square meters. How many cans of paint must Chris purchase to paint the entire surface area of the tank? Let's go back. So we have 20 pi for the lateral surface, and then for the top and bottom, we have the pi r squared formula coming into pay, play. R, r is 2, so r squared is 4, and that's 4 times pi. And we're adding that to 20 times pi. And this is where, in terms of pi, it works out really nicely, because it's like having 20x and 4x, or 24 pi. 